Well, hello there. Well, we're back for part three of preventing a personal impact event, food security. And what I said was we'd come on into my little humble kitchen and we'd take a look at my choices, your choices, in a visual fashion and go over some additional facts. Some of which you may know, some of which you may not. I've read all the comments. In fact, I've read them several times. Just to make sure. And I will be pointing some of those out as we go through these items. So, with that said, let's get on with it. So something that keeps coming up, and I guess I uh, didn't think about it a whole lot. And uh, people keep bringing up one thing. And we got some run right here in the sink. And that's pure clean water. Now, I've had my city water tested and for the most part we got pretty darn good water here in my little small town. We take pride in it since we all drink it. But as you can see I also got a pure filter there for what I drink and what I use for cooking. Just in case. But you got to have it. Because like many of you have said, and of course, I also have bottled water. But the reason I haven't really said anything about that up to this point was this was about food. Now, many of you viewers comment the fact that you can have all this food, dried food. And without the water, you got nothing. And that's absolutely true. And you should have enough water on hand, pure potable water, clean and safe to drink, at least on average, and this is an average, one gallon per person per day. And if you're uh, covering natural disasters, I would think the bare minimum would be for at least a week, if not two weeks. Other people's take that way out to an extreme. I personally have enough water here, bottled water, to go two weeks. I also have another source of water that will carry me on for another six weeks. But the reason I didn't get into the water issue because I think water deserves a whole entire video of just what you need to do, how you need to prepare, and how you can go about it. Because I don't think a lot of people actually pay a lot of mind to it. So I just wanted to throw that in there at the beginning of this video. Before we dive on in to these choices, what they look like, and what's available to us. So with that said, let's get on with it. Okay, y'all. What I've done now is I've laid out a lot of uh, my choices, your choices, uh, on my countertop here. Now granted, I want you to understand this. This is no way representative of what I have stored up. This is just what I could get to easily out of my kitchen pantry and some stores that were easy to get to. And there's four different places just in this house alone where I store food. And then I have a second, third location. And uh, with that said, I also hope you have multiple locations as well. Because you never know when you're going to have to give up the home base and fall back, if you know what I mean. But like we've uh, been talking about, dried beans. And you can see a bunch of them here. You can see dried beans. You can see canned beans. You can see number 10 cans of dried beans. And they also come in five and six gallon buckets. You can get them in 20 pound bags, 20, 50 pound bags if you want to put them up yourself. But the thing I want to discuss with the beans is don't be just thinking about dried beans. Beans are part of the legume family, which also incorporates several other things 
as well as the many varieties of beans that are available. Let's just look here. We've got great northern beans. We've got a southern favorite here. Pinto beans. We also got some kidney beans right here. We've got your large lima beans. And we've got what they call a tiny green lima. And that. But something else, we got lentils. Lentils are very fast cooking. But you also see right here, right there, I got some black eyed peas. And that's why I'm talking about legumes or legumes, depending on what part of the country you come from. Legumes are beans and peas. And a viewer or two brought up the fact split peas, green peas, and I have those two stored up, also in number 10 cans. Now, there are so many varieties of beans, I can't even name them all. I tried to look up a comprehensive list of green of uh, beans, and I just couldn't do it, there's just so many. I mean, these are just some of the few that I had that were easily to grab, throw out here from the kitchen pantry. But there's also other varieties like cranberry, black beans, Jacob's cat, cattle, Azuki, Anastasia, or Stasi, and many others. But with the peas and what we do especially with us being southern black-eyed peas are very familiar to us as they are in most areas of the country and a lot of people refer to them as southern peas to distinguish them from green peas and field peas. Now field peas were used a lot after the during and after the Great Depression to revitalize worn out soil, especially in the southeast and southwest. And there are so many varieties of them as well. Uh, you might be familiar with pink eye purple hole, zipper, crowder, cream peas, ripper peas, clay and iron, and like I said, green split peas. And you can also get dehydrated and freeze dried green peas. Now I have some green peas right here. Here you go, great value sweet peas in cans. People brought up canned beans. Got some navy beans right there. As well as some red beans. Which I want to add right now. Red beans and Kidney beans are not the same thing. Now many recipes that I've looked at on the internet and on YouTube say they are. Trust me, they're not. And if you're gonna do traditional Cajun style red beans and rice, you're gonna want the red beans. You can do it with the kidney, but it's just not gonna be the same. The red beans, are a lot easier to cook, far more tender, and creamier. Trust me. Next time you're whipping up some uh, bean, red beans and rice, look for the red beans and go with them. But another thing I wanted to bring up that a lot of people don't understand is peanuts. Peanuts are part of the legume family as well. They're actually not a nut. They're a bean in a husk that grows just under the surface of the ground. And here in the south, 
we do something called boil peanuts. And back in the day, probably oh ten years or more back, you see roadside stands along state highways and rural highways. And they would always have a sign out by the highway, boiled peanuts. Now, for many of us, we really truly enjoy them. For others, they just can't get past how gross they look, boiled in the husk. And they do have canned boiled peanuts in a lot of grocery stores. And I would encourage you to try them sometimes. I've actually made chili with them and it just gives it a whole different texture and flavor. And you'd be surprised if you ever do it. But another thing I wanted to bring up that's so important about beans, you'll see right here. Got some uh, dark brown beans, got some nice white beans, and right here we've got some speckled beans. And you can see some dried pods. These are beans I grow right here, deep south Bama. And something most people don't realize is you can take and let your green beans, every variety, go ahead and let them mature on the vines in the pods. Let them dry, shuck them dry, save them for seed, or you can save them to be used as a dry bean. And chili, soup, stews, whatever you want. And this first one is a big kahuna. These right here are uh, Burberry's Blue Lake. And of course, as you might think, these right here are my rattlesnake pole beans. And I don't have many of them because I plant them every year. And I gotta save some more up. So be thinking about the legume family in total. Not only beans, but field peas or southern peas. Also green peas. Now something I'd like to say right now, we had a couple of viewers bring up the fact that they take canned beans and why they stock them up, which you can see I do as well, is for the water content. And that is a valid idea. Because there is water in with them. And in certain situations, that water could become crucial to your survival. What a lot of people don't understand is what you eat and the water it contains can help keep you hydrated. But what they also said was they'll take their uh, canned beans or their dried beans and they'll cook them up beforehand. And then they'll dehydrate them. Well, if you cook up dried or, can or dehydrate canned beans, their idea, and I think they're right, when it comes time to rehydrate them, they'll take less water, and they'll cook up much faster than if you were just to start from the dried beans in the beginning. Excellent idea. In fact, somebody, and I tried to look through the comments, I probably missed it, but the fact they do the same thing with baked beans. So keep all that in mind, folks. And here, like I say, I've got them in number 10 cans. And that's how I used to buy them. And uh, Provident Pantry no longer exists. I think that's called uh, Emergency Essentials now. And back when I bought those cans, they were $6.99 a can for five pounds. Now, why'd I buy something in number 10 can? Could have done it myself. And you're absolutely right. Well, back then, I was working anywhere from minimum 70 to 90 hours a week. I didn't have that time, but I had money. I preferred the number 10 cans because they were easier to store than the big buckets, which, like I said, I do have. 
And I have a lot of different varieties in the number 10 cans. Pintos, black beans, split peas. Oh, another bean I didn't mention was garbanzo beans. Have them as well. And lastly, what I'd like to bring up about the bean family is each bean variety has varying degrees of protein and differing vitamins and minerals. And at the end of this video, I'll be sharing with you a site where you can put in such things like dried beans or even packaged food, and it will show you the nutritional breakdown of it. I use it when I'm thinking about looking at something to stock up on. It really comes in handy. Now, as you know, We've talked a lot about rice too. Now, something I want to say right now when we're looking at the rice, and we've already looked at the beans, is these, along with others, is what I call foundational foods. These foods are the foundation that you can use to create so many other dishes and vary what you're going to be eating. It just isn't when there's an emergency or an apocalypse or a natural disaster. It's if you're eating them on daily diet to rotate your stocks. But the one thing about rice is, and you'll see this is enriched long grain white rice. And four people just jump all over me about, well, white rice. They ain't got no nutrients. They're all stripped. Well, yes, they are. During the milling and polishing process, the brand is stripped away from the rice kernels. And there, the healthy oils, omega-3 oils, and a lot of the vitamins and minerals are taken away. Hence why they're called enriched. After the milling and polishing process, many governments actually have laws that white rice has to be enriched. And the USA is one of those. Maybe your country is too. But the reason for the long grain, there's short grain, there's medium grain, and there's long grain. But from everything I've read, long grain, white rice, if you're going to store, is what you want to be storing. So that's what I store. I take it as the gospel. Now, each type of rice has a different purpose. Some are stickier, some are fluffier. I'm not going to get all into that. You can look it up yourself. Now, for those of you who say, well, white rice isn't healthy. Peace, I understand. But brown rice has a very short shelf life. If you don't do anything to it, it's only about six months to eight months at best, and that's best stored at 40 degrees. Think about that. And why? Because it does have a high oil content. And at room temperature, that oil over time can go rancid. And thus your rice can poison you. Now, I have read up prior to doing this video that you can parboil brown rice, actually pre cook it so it's something like minute rice or Uncle Ben's and then store it. Dehydrate it again, store it up in mylar bags with oxygen absorber, moisture absorber, and it'll go five to seven years. Now, I haven't tried that, not sure I will. If any of you have, maybe you'll leave it in the comments. Or maybe you have a different experiences with the brown rice. And like I said, I understand brown rice is the healthiest we can get for us. And so like I say, the beans and the rice are foundations. 
and I'm going to go to my third choice, which was the corn, dried corn. And that's right here. And this is actually a dent corn. And we're going to get in as close as we can. Maybe you can see it. This is a yellow dent corn. And the reason it's called dent is as you can see, the top of each kernel has a small dent in the top. And there's two, and this is a field corn. There's two types. There's dent and flint. And before anybody says it, well, there's Indian, well, Indian corn is a field corn. So what is the dent corn good for? Well, primarily in America, it's used for animal feed. What you don't know, or maybe didn't realize, is dent corn is also, to some minor extent, used for corn syrups, for stuff like corn flakes, and those yummy corn tortilla chips that you buy in the bags. You know, the yellow ones. Also, for the white ones, that's a white dent corn. And it can be ground for cornmeal or corn flour. The other type of dried corn, which I don't have an example of, is flint corn. Now it can be distinguished because instead of having a dent, it's got a hard, shiny surface. No dent. And flint corn is used more often for culinary uses. Mainly for grits, polenta, which by the way, polenta is just basically a coarse ground meal and uh, often referred to as Italian grits. Or atole, which is also Mexican grits or Spanish American. But there's those two types. And Indian corn is either dent or flint. But here again, like I've told y'all before, my three choices were beans, rice, and corn. And I'm not going to go into all the reasons that we've already talked about. But then another that I store is here, and just got a bag I got out of the counter because it's close on hand, it's popcorn. And popcorn is more of a flint type corn than a dent corn. It's got that hard outer shell, shiny. And here again, you can grind it for meal or flour. I don't know about grits, didn't find nothing about that. And we all love popcorn. But some other things y'all brought up is what we're going to get into now. Wheat. Wheat flour. Right here. And this is a bag of all-purpose flour. And there's regular flour, all-purpose flour, bread flour, pretty much are the main ones. And like I've already told you, I switched from uh, stockpiling flour to stockpiling hard red winter wheat berries that when uh, preserved right can have pretty much an indefinite storage life. Now it was Cheryl one of our viewers that brought up the fact that you can pop wheat you would like to go over her comment it's down in the comment section but I never really thought about what the difference was in all purpose in plain flour maybe you don't know this I really didn't know it an all purpose flour is a blend of not only hard wheat flour but also soft wheat flour. And something else I didn't know 
and soft wheat flour has a higher gluten content than hard wheat. So if uh, gluten's an issue with you somewhat, you might want to think about that. Instead of getting all purpose, which is a blend of the two, go ahead and get regular flour, which is normally all hard red wheat and is lower in gluten. Those are some facts I didn't know until I was researching for this video. But then another one that came up quite often was pasta. Dried pasta. And these were two I'd get my hands on, which is some spaghetti, three pound box, and some ziti. Yeah, I have elbow too. And I also have these in number 10 cans. For the same reason I mentioned with the beans. They've all been bought while back when I was working insane hours. But they are also, unless you're getting whole grain pasta, are made from white enriched wheat flour. Where vitamins and minerals have been put back in that were taken out during the milling and processing of the wheat. same situation as we had with the rice. But an interesting fact that you didn't know, I've known, and I've actually done this, if you get in a pinch in a survival situation and you're out of flour, you can grind up pasta, should you have a way to do that, and you can make flour out of it. And you can bake you some bread. Just a little tidbit of information there. Should a time ever arise that you need it. But then, people brought up dehydrated potatoes. They also brought up raw, homegrown, or stored fresh potatoes. Now I also have instant potatoes, plain, they're potato flakes, stored as well. This is just a box I had in the pantry where uh, it's easy to get to. I think they were on sale. And this is nothing but potatoes and some preservatives. Nothing else. Now you got to be careful. If you're getting the flavored potatoes, you know, garlic, olive oil, whatever, those are not going to store anywhere near the same time that plain instant potatoes are going to store. If you're going to store instant potatoes for long term, they're going to be just, need to be just plain. Now also some of y'all brought up the fact that you cook up your potatoes, whether they be sliced, diced, or mashed, and dehydrate them yourself. And that way they're just potatoes. And then you put those up in either canning jars or mylar bags. Same thing with adding an oxygen absorber and moisture absorber. That's excellent. Excellent idea. It does take a lot of time and effort though. And I just don't have that amount of time. Or I didn't when I bought my stockpile of instant potato flakes. But you can do it if you're interested. There are videos actually on YouTube showing you just how to go about it. But potatoes they provide you starch. Here again, it's that energy. Now, something I would like to say about the white rice and the potatoes, since we're talking about potatoes. They're both high glycemic index foods. In other words, they can spike your blood sugar, where beans cannot. 
And if you happen to have diabetes, or on the verge of it, this might be something you need to think about. I don't have that ailment at the moment, so it's not something of a concern with me, but it is something you should think about if you're definitely suffering from type 1 or type 2 diabetes. I'm just throwing that on in there. But then we had people talk about oatmeal. And we're going to talk about that real quick. And this is, this is what people call instant oatmeal. Well, this says one minute. And here's some things I didn't know about oatmeal until here this year. When I was looking at storing some up, and this here again is just a container that's here in the kitchen. This is also stored in number 10 cans for my own stockpiles. But there is rolled oats, steel cut oats, and there's instant oats. Do you know the difference between the three? No, I really didn't. But rolled oats, we'll just start with that, are oat groats, or the seeds, that are rolled flat. And they may or may not be steamed. Most are though. They're steamed first, then they roll them through some type of roller. The instant oatmeal goes through the same process where the oatmeal groats slash seeds are steamed longer and rolled even thinner. Now why is that? The thinness of the ro rolled oat determines the cooking time. That's all there is to it. Right. I didn't know that. Now I've always bought and stored just regular rolled oats. I didn't get the instant kind because I was sort of the same mindset with uh, instant rice. It had already been pre-cooked. That's not quite true with the oats for oatmeal. Yep, they've been steamed, but not cooked to the point that they do with parboiled rice. Now, steel cut oats, which is a whole different type of uh, oats, I mean, same oats, different process, and it creates a different texture. Because what you're doing is you're actually chopping up the oat groats, which are the seeds, and it makes sort of like a coarse meal. And a lot of people refer to this as Irish oatmeal or Scottish oatmeal. It has a whole different texture from uh, oatmeal that's prepared with rolled oats, whether it be standard rolled oats, which will have a little bit chewier texture than instant oatmeal will or so I've read I haven't actually sat down and ate all three but the one thing whether you're getting the regular rolled oats or the instant or the steel cut is they're all whole grains everything's in there now in my mind the rolled oats to me would have far more of the whole grain in them than the steel cut. Just because I'm thinking during the cutting process and grinding process there'd be a dust and then a lot of that is lost during the process. And that just may be my way of thinking. But then y'all brought up some things that are interesting where you can go through this and like I say the beans, the rice, the corn, even the potatoes, the pasta, and the oatmeal would all be considered foundation foods. The base of something to make something more is the way I look at it. But some of you brought up squash. And I have some right here. This is actually winter squash. These are some acorn squash. 
and butternut squash that I grew last year. And these were picked right about this time last year. So they're approaching at least one year old. And you can see they're still in perfect condition. Now these are winter squash. But because they actually, if you allow them to mature and then uh, harden off, they get this really hard outer shell. And it's like their own bulletproof protection. Now with that said, I want you to notice the long stems on all these. It's important that you allow that stem to dry on the vine till it's nice and brown. It's dry. And then when you cut it, you want to cut it as long as possible. Because it's that length right there that keeps air, microbes, and bacteria out of the squash. And like I say, these are approaching one year old. And there's nothing wrong with them. I've been eating my squash. I ate it all last winter, this spring, some this summer, and probably will come this Sunday. Cut them open. Not absolutely not nothing wrong with them. But then some other viewers, they brought up onions. Fresh, dehydrated, of course you can get them freeze dried as well and I gotta admit that's an excellent thing to have as well having the onions on hand is going to make all the rest of this much more palatable and tasty others of you have brought up several times spices and I'm going to open up a cabinet here this is my spice cabinet here in my kitchen I'm not sure the lighting's good, but you can see. Well, I've got quite a few of them up there. And that's not the sum total of them either. I also have spices that I bought, both uh, dehydrated and freeze dried in what's called a number two can. That's basically can about this size right here and I have uh, that put up as well and it's with these spices as well as you know a couple of basics and that's of course black pepper and then up there we got some salt that will make your foundation foods many different tastes and add so much to your diet now granted if you're going to store black pepper for long term you need to be storing the whole peppercorns now you can see here I got a couple of big boxes and this small box but I also have whole black peppercorns stored in containers with oxygen absorbers and moisture absorbers uh, put away as well. I just don't mess with them. Now something y'all didn't come up with and just as a last for everything and this is an old uh, prepper item and that's bouillon cubes this goes all the way back to the army days and some of you also brought up peanut butter it gives us that sweetness and also pack full of protein and then another thing y'all brought up is fats and oils uh, if you watch my cooking videos and that you'll see me use my olive oil 
Now I got the old Crisco up there. Got my olive oil there. Now I do have some corn oil on that too. And I have that stored as well. Because you're going to need the fats. And this is not the sum total of everything you should have stored for your uh, food storage and preparedness. This gives you a start of a basic foundation to build on. And that's something we're going to be looking at in the next video. With all of this that we've already discussed, the foundation, what are your favorite additional foods that you store? Now, I don't want you to put them in the comments of this video. That's for the next video. I'll go over some of mine. Some of you already shared that with us. But like I've said in the past, I want this to be about a progression of learning. For those of us who don't know. And like always, I want to thank each and every one of you that has participated in the comment section. Joined in in the conversations below the video. Because you've made it, as my grandson would say, all the more better. And that's the absolute truth. So be thinking about your favorite items and what you do to add to the basics. And we'll bring that up in the next video. Now, y'all, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something along the way. Some additional information. Maybe not. Maybe you knew it all. I'd like to give one shout out here to Martha Adams. She wrote a big long comment. A few of the others did as well, but Martha brought up a good point. We can have all this. We can have our beans or rice or oatmeal or potatoes, whatever. And something like a health issue can hit you one day where a lot of what you have put back you can no longer eat or tolerate. And like she said, you got to be flexible. If you're going to do it, you're going to have to have a broad range of things. Because that day may come when part of what you have, you just can't eat. Whether it's a health issue, it could be bug infested, mold, who knows. And I just wanted to give Martha a shout out. She had a lengthy comment below the video. I hope many of y'all go back in the previous video and read what she had to say. It really moved me and made me think more. Because I'm not as young as I used to be. I have health issues of my own. Though I am still tolerant of most foods. So y'all, I wanted to share a couple of sites. It's only going to be two that I use quite often. Uh, one is to check out the nutritional value of different foods. You can even check out certain packaged foods. Now it doesn't have all of them, but it does have quite a few. And the other is a site that I use to buy some of my uh, food storage at the moment. Why? Because right now it's got the least expensive prices. And it doesn't have a uh, wide range of other sites but it's cheaper and I just thought you might like to be interested and then at the end Trix wants to say something so let's go on into the computer right quick okay y'all we're back here at the computer put you up on the desk now you need to be quiet now we're at a website it's actually nutritiondata.self.com. Self nutrition data. Know what you eat. And what I like about this site is right here. You can e enter in anything. 
and we're going to enter in beans because we talked a lot about them and it's going to give you just a list of beans uh, beans, zuki, yokan, mature seeds, beans, and zuki, mature seeds raw. It's got beans baked, canned with pranks, beans baked, canned with beef, canned with pork. You sort of get the idea. Down here, beans black, mature seeds raw. Or beans black, mature seeds cooked, boiled with salt. We're just going to click on that, just to show you what comes up. And what you're going to get down here is it's going to tell you about the calorie information. Number of calories, and this is per one cup. From carbohydrates, from fat, from protein. And it's going to go down here and tell you the total carbohydrates, total dietary fiber. Fats, fatty acids, it's going to tell you about them. Over here, protein, amino acids. How much protein per every, uh, per one cup of beans? And uh, black beans here, give you 30%. Then it's going to come down here and tell you what vitamins are in there. Like here with black beans. 28% uh, of your daily values for thiamine. Sixty four percent folate. It also goes through the minerals. Which with beans, they're high in iron, twenty percent. Magnesium, thirty percent. Phosphorus, twenty four. And down here manganese thirty eight percent. Copper eighteen. You get the idea. And just think about that protein there for a minute. And we're going to back out of here. And we're going to look at another bean. And we're just going to come over here to one of my southern favorites. And that's pinto beans. Okay. And here's beans, pinto, immature seeds, frozen, cooked, boiled, drained, without salt. Or, for a comparison, equal. Beans, pinto, immature seeds, frozen, cooked, boiled, drained with salt. So that'll be comparable to the black beans. And you can come down here, and once again you see your calories. 460 calories. You can compare that against the black beans. Or you'll notice the calorie content is higher. Carbohydrates, 357. That's higher too than the black beans. For your total carbohydrates, 29%. Dietary fiber is 98% with pinto beans. Also gives you the percentage of fat, which isn't much in beans. Protein on these is 53% of your daily values. And then it also tells you the amount of vitamins and minerals. So why is this site important well you can take what you have stocked up now or what's in your pantry and you can take a look at it for the protein levels carbohydrate levels fat levels vitamins and minerals and see what they are and what you want to have is you especially like with beans unless there's a certain flavor you like You'd want to have the highest protein, highest calories. You want a nutrient dense foods, especially if you're storing for emergency situation, survival, such as that nature. You want nutrient dense foods. Well, this site will allow you to take a look at every one of the foods you already have and any others that you might be thinking about. And I'm going to leave a link to this site in the description below the video. I use this all the time when I'm just thinking about, well, what about this? You know, what's in kale? What's in cabbage? What's in bananas? You can put it in here and you can find out all on one website. So I'll leave a link to this in the description below the video.
And now with that said, I want to show you another site. And this is Honeybill. It's a site I use and have used in the past. And uh, they have dehydrated beans, vegetables, and entrees, and meats, cheeses. I think they have cheeses, they might not. Anyway, it doesn't isn't such a broad range of other sites like Emergency Essentials, Mountain House, and what have you. But what I found to be mostly true with this particular site and their brands is they'll be the least expensive most of the time. And I bought a lot off this site. Uh, not everything I have in number 10 cans or buckets is from here. But I would say uh, about 60% is. But I want to share this site with you. And here again, I'll be leaving a link to this site in the video description below the video. But you can go over here and shop by uh, category. And uh, you can hit bakery. And they've got bacon mixes, corn and tortilla products, dairy, flour, sugars and sweeteners. Then we come down grains and seeds. They have barley, buckwheat, corn, millet, mixed grains and more, oats, rice, rye, seed products, and wheat. And let's just click on wheat real fast, just to give you some idea. They've got cracked wheat. They've got cracked wheat in 50 pounds. Crushed red wheat and they got the hard red wheat which is what I store up so we'll click on that real quick just to give you sort of an idea and they got the extra large bag 50 pounds for $45.99 a bag and they have buckets large bucket that's 40 pounds that's right here and large can which is what I do mostly which is five pounds for $13.99. Now if you'll notice here on the cans, they show uh, six cans or a case for $75.55. Now if you do the math, 75.55 divided by six, that drops it down to $12.59 a can. Not a bad price. I just prefer the number 10 cans. You know, I'm all by myself here. And rather than open up a whole five gallon bucket, I'd rather open up number 10 can. It's not like I use a whole ton of flour. Your situation may be different. But this holds true with beans and what have you. I just wanted to share this site with you. In case you don't have the time or you don't have a dehydrator or you don't want to go through you know getting a mylar bag getting the buckets inches whatever I find this site along with several others just makes it easier on me right now and comes in a size I can deal with So, now we're going to go ahead and turn this over to Trixie and end this video. Trix, what you doing there, girl? What you want? Hmm? What you want, Trix, 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 Trix? How you doing, old girl? Hmm? You talk to Papa? What you want? Hmm? Hmm? Trick. What you want? Food? You sure? Well, let's come on over here and see what we got. What do you want? Hmm? What you want? What do you want? Well, it looks like you got plenty. You want food? Now. Oh, that food? Well, that food's all gone. How about this food? You want this food? Trick. Want this food? Trick. 
like these you do <laughs> okay <laughs> like this okay hold on let me put the camera down and I'll get it for you okay so folks until I see you next time on the next video why don't you all take care out there take care of your families your loved ones and friends and stay safe that's important and I know God will bless you as you have blessed others I truly believe that so I'll see you on the next video goodbye for now